Hey, good morning, everybody. It's great to be with you this beautiful Sunday morning. Not a breath of wind, and it is absolutely gorgeous. And we've got all kinds of stuff going on, including San Diego yellowfin tuna in June. A rare luvar was taken in San Diego. Also, there's a lot of activity down in that neck of the woods. A little bit of more of the albacore observations. Seal Beach Police put on a great event for kids. Thresher sharks from the pier, and also some really good signal just about everywhere, but the fish have been really finicky. All right, grab your cup of coffee. So much to get into with you here this morning. And once again, it's a great pleasure to be with you on behalf of Friedman Adventures. Thank you so much for watching, sharing videos, and giving us a like this morning. That really helps us. So smash that like button and off to the races we will go. All right. Great day yesterday with the Seal Beach Police on the Seal Beach Pier. We had so many kids and families that showed up, and the common denominator was let's get kids out into the great outdoors, away from phones, away from you know social media, that kind of thing, and show them the beautiful world we actually had. So I salute all the guys at the Seal Beach Police Department for putting on such a great event. The families that showed up, big fish bait and tackle right down the street here as well as Donut City, who provided really a lot of temptation to yours truly on my keto diet. But you can ask the cops. I resisted. I didn't touch one. Great day and a lot of fun, no question about it. So let's talk about San Diego. We'll start right there because there's some really interesting stuff going on down there. Number one, we have a south swell. And that south swell has been going on for a couple days now, pushing warm water into the Baja coast. And with that warm water, we're actually seeing a few yellow fin tuna. The Liberty yesterday had a really good sign on 60 to 120 pound blue fin tuna. But the trend where we're seeing all this fish just about everywhere and it doesn't want to bite continued yesterday. So they ended up with one yellow fin tuna. All right, so you think to yourself, one yellow fin tuna does not a season make. However, a smaller um, six pack was out yesterday, the little G out of H&M Landing. They had limits of blue fin tuna, number one, and three yellow fin tuna. So that warm water, that southern swell is starting to push up some different species and that certainly bodes well for the future. I mean, along the beach there, you could have copious amounts of yellowtail on the kelps, more yellow fin tuna that flush in here, as well as some other tropical and subtropical species and that certainly is very very interesting if you ask me and of course i'm really excited about our malahini trips because we have them in july august and september three of those trips and man if we get that warm water on the beach that could be interesting now some of you are scratching your heads and saying hmm warm water and this maniac has been talking about albacore and that the albacore are right around the corner and they're being taken out on the urban bank, which is only 300 miles from San Diego. So let me tell you, back in the day, and many of you guys who are watching because you're old like me, back in the day, we've had scenarios where we have warm water on the Baja coast, cooler water offshore, and you literally come out of Point Loma and you say, all right, what do we want to do? Do we want to go down the beach and have a smorgasbord, Dorado, yellowfin tuna, yellowtail on kelps, or do we want to go outside and catch albacore. So that warm water and that southern swell does not prohibit the fact that we still think there's going to be some albi in here. And I know you guys think I'm nuts. And most of you are right. I am nuts. So we'll keep our eyes on that. Very interesting. A few yellowfin tuna starting to get into the counts. Maybe we'll see some more of that. The, the trend of seeing a lot of fish continued, however, yesterday. Very, very slow for many of the day boats. Those fish in the daytime don't want to bite. At night, some very good fishing, but there's some misses going on also. So there's just kind of this weird funk going on and it's everywhere. We'll talk about it here in a moment. We'll see if it's with this guy too, back behind me. Hopefully he'll catch something by the end of the day. I do need to talk to you about a luvar that was taken yesterday. And that is pretty darn interesting stuff. The Grande was on a day and a half trip. And they had some pretty good shooting. They had 16 bluefin to 150 pounds, but they had that rare luvar, which you don't see every single day. Now, luvar are 
in tropical and subtropical waters, rarely taken by sport fishermen. A lot of times they're taken kind of near the surface. I don't know the exact circumstance of this catch, but they're out in deeper water, but feed up the water column a little bit. So once again, we'll continue to see if we're gonna get any other rare fish. Now, they can grow to seven feet, get to 300 pounds, and they love to, buy, to chew on jellyfish, like our friends, the Mola Mola. And they're known, the females, to produce a huge amount of eggs. A six footer was examined and it had 50 million eggs in it. How would you like to be the guy that was had to count those eggs? Man, that had to be some chore. I can just see that. Let's see, 39 million 164, 39, 165. Hey Bill, how you doing? Oh you idiot. I gotta start over again. That is one heck of a job. I'm glad I didn't have that one. Uh, those fish are closely related to the surgeon fish. So very interesting catch. San Diego yesterday, one bluefin tuna. Seen tons of fish. We're just waiting for the light switch to go on. It's not gonna stay like this. This happens, okay? It happens all the time where you see the fish. It's so frustrating, they don't wanna bite. But at some point in time, that light switch is gonna be on and we're gonna watch it very closely. Now, once again, this is when you need to be really staying to your tackle. You need that 40 pound fluorocarbon to fly line with, but you need that 80 to 100 pound for the deeper presentations, whether it's the knife jigs, the zakanas, the flat falls, uh, you definitely need that or you're gonna sink or fish. So keep that in mind. One of these days, perhaps today, that light switch is gonna go on. And of course, I'm looking at our Amigo trip on Wednesday and we've got a two day trip. So we are either gonna see a lot of fish and not catch that much or the light switch is gonna go on. And I'm the eternal optimist. I'm thinking they're not gonna throw me overboard on this trip. They're gonna be stoked because we're gonna get them. And I'll have a game plan, you guys, here shortly. Uh, Mark Paisano is out on the Amigo. He's searching many different areas. We'll keep our eyes on it for you very, very closely. So San Diego, some really interesting stuff. Yellowfin tuna, that rare luvar, that southern swell that is pushing up more warm water fish. We're going to see some fireworks here in the very near future. Very interesting stuff going on. The Malahini, speaking of Bill Wilkerson, my friend down there out of H&M Landing, he decided, hey, let's go check out the islands today, the Coronado Islands. He had one yellow out there, some sand bass, a barracuda, a few calico bass, and then they hammered away at the rockfish. So Coronado Islands are remaining about the same as they have been, namely seeing some yellows, not catching that much. Same kind of a situation just about everywhere we look. All right, um, let me cover the islands for you since I'm on that right now. Bouncing down to Todo Santos off Ensenada, similar kind of situation. Incidentally, the Pongueros down there are happy because a lot of that bluefin slid back down in front of them or just a little bit above Ensenada. So they're out there trolling around with their Mad Max and doing really, really well. Todos about the same, not anything to ride home about. We bounce you up here to San Clemente Island. Same thing, seeing a ton of fish, not wanting to bite. A lot of yellows, a lot of bonita, some pretty good calico bass fishing. If you're into that, that bass bite is really starting to turn on as well as along the coast. I'll get into that in just a moment, but Clemente holds a lot of potential. And yesterday, well, Rudy Morgan, he ran a private boater, a uh, private boat out there at Catalina Island, and 15-year-old Davis had a 67.6 pound White sea bass, you talk about a slug. That was one gorgeous fish. And that's the kid's first white sea bass. Can you beat that? He had a couple of other sea bass and four yellowtail, nothing under 25 pounds. That is some pretty amazing fishing for a kid's first day of sea bass fishing. Got to take our hat off to Rudy and the folks that made that happen. That is very, very interesting stuff. We love that. Now we bounce you up there to Santa Barbara and San Nicholas Islands. Halibut, sea bass, yellowtail, seeing it, not biting that well. There's some pretty good halibut fishing at Nick right now, as well as the potential for a sea bass bite. And our weather is beautiful. It's gonna stay beautiful for our trip on Wednesday night. So those are venues, those are options that are available to us. And with the white sea bass limit going to three on the 16th, I'm super excited, fingers crossed that weather holds up there in the Channel Islands. Just speaking of islands in general, same darn 
thing. Aloha spirit yesterday, picked at the bass, no exotics, no sea bass, no halibut. Seeing enough fish to make you want to cry because they don't want to bite. It really, really looks like you're sitting on a powder cake everywhere. And those fish have locked jaw. And as I said, that's going to change one of these days. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe Thursday. That is going to turn on and really start to bite. So we'll keep our eyes on it. Hopefully it's going to get going. Dropper loops have been the, one of the best ways to take fish up there in the Channel Islands. But they do a lot of that run and gun kind of fishing. I told you that Gary Kwan from Taddy Lures was recently on board the Aloha Spirit. The Endeavor has been getting them. And they run and gun. They'll, they'll run, get on a sonar mark, and tell you to drop. It's fun. It's exciting. Hopefully it gets on the bite again today. One thing about the Channel Islands is copious amounts of rockfish up there for the most part. So hopefully the exotics are going to get on the chew here very, very soon. All right, coastal. That southern swell in San Diego is pushing that warm water, and many of the local boats down there are experiencing some improving and pretty good calico bass fishing, some sand bass also. Fish are starting to spawn. That is looking pretty darn good. Also, um, lighter line, choosing a good hot bait. Some of the lures that work are the hookup baits, and uh, also we'll be out on the Judith Ann in just a couple of hours. I'll be going with Tom Durer, and we're gonna check out the local bass bite for you. And I'll be with Eddie Leland, superior captain from the old days. And we'll see if we can't catch some bass as well as provide you with some valuable information on how you can do the same. So up and down the coast, Dana, everywhere, we're seeing improving bass action. The victory has been really red hot and doing a great job. They had 42 anglers yesterday, 194 sand bass, 210 on the sculpin. Everybody's getting a shot at going home with some good eating fish. Nothing wrong with that. Enterprise on the bass also. Limits of sculpin. Couple of barracuda. Incidentally, today is the last day for my barracuda prediction to come true. And that prediction, in case you haven't been tuning in, is that there will be a good barracuda bite. And I want to say at least 50 fish on a boat here today somewhere along the Southern California coast. Is that vague enough for you? I mean, that covers just about everything. Hopefully that'll come together because I really want to see it happen. Up there in the Channel Islands, also along the beaches, there's more and more sand bass and more and more barracuda. Those barracuda love to bite the iron, so I can't wait to be chucking a Taddy 45 or similar type of lure here very, very soon. I love barracuda fishing, no question about it. So the coastal regions are definitely kicking into gear. I see a lot of surf fishermen this morning, but so far not all that great. Um, surf fishing improving. Again, uh, you want to fish that high tide if you're looking for a yellowfin croaker, a uh, spot fin croaker, digging up the sandworms. Watch the video. i show you how to do it, and you will indeed be able to catch some fish. He may be running over there to catch a fish right now. So, um, And Lucky Crafts for the halibut, that's also very good. We have a grunion run on the horizon, the 16th, when that grunion run, right before grunion runs, like right now, is a good time to surf fish. Those fish stage, fish get on them, some fish move on the beach. It's a really fun way to get it done. Remember, observation only, keep your grimy little fingers off those grunion because they're doing their thing. And next month, you'll be able to take some. There will be a limit of only 30 grunion now. So keep that in mind also. Man, I'm telling you, there's a lot of excitement going on. And yesterday on the Steel Beach Pier, I also had the opportunity to meet some really great guys. I mean, it was really fun. Roger was there. He's a great guy. Also got to meet Jesus. Jesus sent me a text last night. It was great to meet him. And finally, also, we met Bobby. Now, these guys are into the thresher sarks on the pier. So I just wanted to spend a little moment with Bobby and pick his brain about this and see how you might be able to go out and catch fish on the pier, those great, big, giant thresher sharks. Good morning, Bobby Anthony. How are you, my friend? I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm good. So you're down here fishing for thresher sharks off the Seal Beach Pier. Have you had any luck recently? Yeah, about three weeks ago, we hooked up um, with about five of them. 
Wow. Um, we landed two. Uh, one was about seven foot. The second one was about six and a half, about 45 minutes each bite. What a thrill. Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was great, you know. Um, first two of the, of the of the year of the first summer so yeah it's, it's nice you know that's excellent and uh, so you guys come down here on a regular basis and fish this and you're with a fishing club right yeah we have our own fishing club called uh, bait runners um, yeah we usually come out here uh, pretty much any day of the week if we can but mostly Saturdays and Sundays try to fish a lot of local other piers also just to um, get a little awareness out there and uh, um, let people know that our clubs just all about um, just about having fun, you know, meeting new people and showing some people how to fish and how to fish for the sharks and stuff, you know, just like somebody showed us. Kind of like right now, meeting new people That's like it. you and I are yeah. meeting, and yeah. I'm fortunate I met both you guys. Yeah, no, it's great to meet you, you know. Um, thank you for, you know, letting us get a little shout out here. I really appreciate that, you know. And if um, people want to join Bait Runners, how can yeah, they, they do could, that? Yeah, they could go ahead and go on our IG. Um, they could go ahead and miss our on our IG, and then uh, we'll go ahead and reach out to them. And then uh, go ahead and meet up with them and, you know, show them just, you know, if they're willing to learn how to fish for sharks, we're willing to show them, you know, the, how the setup is and stuff like that. It works here. It will work at any other pier. Man, well. I'll tell you what. People like you are what make this sport so great because we need more people to come in. And we're here for an event with the yes, Seal sir. Beach Police to help kids go fishing. Perfect. There's nothing better Perfect. than to get kids out, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be here to help them out, too, you know, if they hook up with something big or even if they want to grab our pole to see what it feels like uh, it's the experience of a lifetime you know once you get something big uh, especially when you can feel that rod pulling you you're, you're addicted you want to come every weekend the tug is the drug right? that's, that's it man that's it you said it right on the head of the, of the nail <laughs> and, and uh, I mean crusher sharks they jump they put on an aerial display what a freaking thrill oh yeah what a thrill just to see it happening and you know holding on to the fishing pole knowing what you have yeah it's amazing it's hey amazing. Bobby Real pleasure, my friend. Hey, thank you very much for the time and for the opportunity to jump onto your YouTube channel and, and throw out some awareness. Bait runners all day long. Hey, I see a Friedman Adventures bait runner event. Yes, sir. Very yes, near sir. future. Yep, stay tuned. IG. Thank you. All right, thanks so much, Bobby. That was a great report. And I look forward to getting on the pier again. You know, I was looking at that pier yesterday saying, Eddie Leland and I have got to give that a shot. Dig up some sandworms here and then go to the pier. We're gonna do that here very, very soon. And I'll have a video report on that for you really, really soon. All right, everybody, what a situation we are faced with. Will there be albacore, yellowfin starting to move in, that rare luvar in San Diego, bass fishing along the beaches, really on right now. Tons of fish everywhere that are playing finicky. They don't wanna bite. Will it be the day when they turn on? We'll have the answer to those questions and more as I head out now on the Judithan from our home at 22nd Street Landing in beautiful San Pedro, California, to see if we can't get a bite. As always, it's a real pleasure to spend time with you. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy Sunday to spend some time with us here at Friedman Adventures, and I'll have lots more as the day goes on. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful Sunday.